how frequently do underage students try to purchase alcohol. Often, in the beginning of the <laughs> semester, you know, you, you get a lot of attempts. People who are in college and from this area probably pass on to their friends that they don't stand much of a chance here. Nowadays, it's, it's quite difficult with um, advances in technology and computers and such. It's quite a challenge. We have a book that we refer to, and we also have two automated mechanisms in place where they scan the barcodes on the IDs. Um, so there's pretty much one of four tests that it has to go through. And if it is fake, more than likely it will fail at least one of the four. And you, you absolutely have to have ID. Even when groups of people come in, say a group of two, a group of three, a group of four, and only one is purchasing, everybody has to furnish ID. Um, so that's one way that we deal with it. We're pretty well known as being very stringent with our ID laws. Should someone sell uh, alcohol to someone who is underage and they didn't ask them for ID, they're terminated to terms of the store. What the uh, repercussions are for the store from a legal standpoint if someone furnishes us with an ID and it passes all four of those tests that we have in place, from what I understand, the person is held for criminal impersonation. It's a fairly serious charge, but that's not something that occurs too often. You know, we're not in the business of uh, giving people a hard time or getting people into trouble. We basically tell we're also one of the major reasons why we're so adamant about fake IDs. It's, as a business owner, it's responsibility to the community, but it's just proven that it's not safe for people under the age of 21 to be consuming alcohol. Well, people have gone beyond and slammed doors and broken doors and screamed, yelled, and hollered. Nothing terribly eccentric. Some people go above and beyond.